Hi guys, this is Aiden's Toy Trove. Um, I am washing some model horses today. I had a couple of you ask for a video on how we did it. Um, it's really rather simple. Um, in here is just plain Dawn dish soap, so that's what's in here. I don't have the bottle and I can't show it to you, but it's just the, the liquid dish soap that you use to clean dishes. And this little bottle here has simple green cleaning solution in it. Um, and usually what I do is I give the horses um, a rinse with hot water and um, the liquid Dawn dish soap. And if there are any marks that um, persistently stay on them, like say this um, white mark on this Black Beauty shoulder, then I, um, I put some soap on or either some uh, simple green and then I kind of uh, rub it very gently with a washcloth or my fingernail or even this toothbrush. So I'll just get to washing and then we'll probably speed up the video so um, it's not super boring. Uh, you'll probably hear a lot of water sound since the camera's right next to the sink and I apologize for that. So I already ran this water um, on high and hot. So this is hot water. Hot water is key. And what I'll do first is I'm just going to give uh, these horses that need to be um, rinsed off a real quick rinse and then I'll work on any um, marks that are lingering like this uh, white mark on Black Beauty shoulder here. And the Chanel also has some um, white marks on her shoulder. You can see them up here. And the water's going cold on me already. Come on, warm up water. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this before. This is a show jumping warm blood base and it's uh, all craft and that's actually kind of unfortunately the norm for this type of base. You can request a replacement base from Briar. Uh, we have a um, an article on our website on how to do that. This is Twilight Terror and he has a battery in him. Um, so I'm just going to give him a real quick rinse over because I don't want his electronics to get wet. But he is uh, very dusty. Other than that, he's in great condition. So I'm not going to uh, put a lot of soap or get him too wet. And then we have this Kalua here who is um, fairly clean. And the only thing I noticed with this particular model was that she had um, a really hard to see black mark on this left front sock here um, and it looks like it actually came off with just a little bit of soap and water. Um, one trick I use sometimes on models where there are persistent black marks on the white is I use a Mr. Clean a magic eraser. It's basically a sponge with um, some bleach on it and you just uh, wet it and uh, run it over the black mark. Um, this can only be used on um, the bare white plastic of briars. You can't use it on the color at all or you'll just take the paint right off and it's rather ch tricky with the base coat chalky models like the newer ones because it, it does take that, that thin white layer of paint off and you don't want to do that. This here, this is Milky Way, and I think this horse just basically needed a bath. She didn't have um, anything terribly wrong with her. So here's just some Dawn dish soap. Um, I like to wash all the models we get just to make sure that they don't have um, any dirt or dust or um, any odors. If they have any odors, um, we typically put them outside or we put them in a cabinet along with a container of baking soda to let them air out and if there is any lingering scent or if there has been any really bad scent to the model um, we do disclose that in the auction because I know that some people can be quite sensitive to uh, different scents especially smoke and perfumes and things like that so it looks basically like Lula's done what you can't see here is I have a towel behind the camera and the horses are just standing there drying and some of the tippy ones are lying down. Now we're going to work on Black Beauty's mark on his shoulder here. Um, from experience I can see that uh, this white here has, it's above the finish, like it's not a scratch. I guess it might just kind of be something that you have to learn to look for to know whether it's a scratch or above the paint. 
Um, so I'm putting some Simple Green on that, which is a little stronger than dish detergent. And then, then I just put some dish detergent on too, which is nice and slick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rub that in and then I'm going to take my washcloth here and I'm gonna kinda just stick my fingernail into the washcloth so that my fingernail is basically padded, but I'm going to put it very gently over this white mark. And I can already see it's fading. Um, one of the hard things I've noticed with removing little teeny weeny marks like this is I'll finish the horse up and I'll think everything's um, perfect and gone and then I'll dry the horse and the marks will reappear. So you might notice that too. Here's another mark on his rump here and this one I'm just going to put some Dawn dish soap on and I'm going to take my washcloth and stick my fingernail in there and very very gently work at that white mark. You definitely don't want to push hard. Um, you can risk damaging the paint and even more likely um, leaving a, a shiny streak. So you want to work slowly and go very gently. This one seems to be cleaning up pretty easily. I could definitely tell that the white is uh, fading. So we're going to rinse them off and see where we are as far as white marks are. Look, see, I can see that he has one still on his shoulder here, and it's really, really faint on his rump. You can barely even see it, but we'll give that one just a little more attention. I believe this fellow um, was a QVC special run, and he's designed after Black Beauty. He's one of Briar's probably rarest Black Beauties as far as Black Beauty goes. Like, he's the hardest to find. He's really pretty. He's a um, uh, matte black. So you definitely don't want to get any shiny marks on a super matte finish like this guy has. And I'm being very very gentle when I rub these white marks. And they're coming off. I'm not sure if you can see them in the video but hopefully you can or you can just kind of get a general idea of what I'm doing. Um, water and soap should not hurt your model however if your model has ever had any paint touch-ups done, this might remove the paint touch-ups, so beware. And um, if your model has had paint touch-ups, um, I would be hesitant to uh, wash them like this. I, the most I would probably do would give them a quick rinse with cold water and then immediately dry them. I do that with some of my custom finished horses and people are always surprised. But a well done custom finished horse uh, is sealed so the paint shouldn't come off and as long as that horse is sealed you should be good to go but with my custom horses I, that get really dusty or come in dirty I'll give them a real quick rinse with cold water and immediately dry them. Black Beauty here is looking pretty good. Let's give them another rinse. I'm checking out my other side. I don't recall seeing any marks before. I looked at him before I did this too, just to kind of give me a reference point on what I would be working on. And then with these darker models, once they're um, cleaned up, um, you can set them out to dry, but typically you're going to want to uh, dry them because you'll see the hard water spots on them when they dry and it's kind of... Um, it's distracting. You'll see just like a big water splotch where the water has dried. So it's best to dry them if you can. I use um, old uh, white t-shirts for that. We have a bunch of white t-shirts that we use for cleaning up model horses. So always with our laundry, we have, of course, our clothes, our towels, and a bunch of t-shirts and rags. Because we, uh, we clean up a lot of horses. We try to aim to, anyhow, for every horse to leave here in the best condition that it possibly can. And to me, that includes making sure it's clean and that helps to ensure that the buyer will be happy. Our buyers know the quality of our models and um, they keep returning. And one of the remarks we have had is, your models are so clean. And yes, it's because we wash them uh, before we sell them. Because um, even just standing there on the shelf, they can gather dust. I know how that is. The Black Beauty here is looking pretty good. 
here's my maroons, and then I'm going to set him aside, um, and I'm going to check him out in a minute to see how those white spots are looking, if they're popping back up. Because like I said, um, sometimes spots reappear after um, they start drying off a bit. So here is Chanel, who has white marks on her shoulder up, um, by her withers, and then she has two tiny ones on her haunch. So we're going to see if we can get these off. Uh, another thing of note is gray horses. Briar's gray paint is extremely fragile, um, especially those old dapple grays, like the old dapple gray Proud Arabian Mare with a semi-gloss finish. The, um, the gray is extremely fragile and it kind of, um, on a lot of them, you can just see where the gray paint has smudged over time just by being handled. So on those gray models, I do not recommend um, scrubbing them in any way, shape, or form. Um, you can rinse them off and give them a quick over with some soap, but I, I do not recommend, um, well, definitely don't scratch at them like this. And if you're using a cloth to wash them, be very, very gentle because the paint fades and comes off extremely easy. Oop, I mean, I can see Chanel's marks on her shoulder are coming off here, and that's excellent. And uh, if you're not familiar with these white marks, they, um, they seem to magically appear, as a collector know this. Um, it's from rubbing up against another horse or something that the horse is standing next to. Even when you're really careful and you just kind of tap a model next to another one, they can end up with these kinds of marks and they can be white or they can be the color of the other horse or um, black's another common one. I personally find that the white marks seem to come off a lot easier than the black. I don't know if it's the type of paint or what, but um, Chanel here is cleaning up very nicely. So after um, having cleaned up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these briar horses, I have so much respect for you live showers who have these beautiful model horses in perfect condition because I'm sure they must, if you have them displayed, you must be taking really exceptional care of them and you, you must clean them up for every show and look for all these tiny little imperfections that they can have. I really love Chanel. Um, she's a very pretty color. I have her and I have Croy Damsha and um, Banks Vanilla. And then I have the Silver Filigree. And honestly, the Silver Filigree isn't one of my favorite colors, but I'm not big on decorators. So that's probably why. I don't have the wood green one. I would like the wood green one. Um, I think her name is Cypress from the Vintage Club this year. I'm trying to think if there's any others that I'm missing. She's a fairly new mold, so I don't think so. Um, she was sculpted by Sarah Minkwitz. Um, I think this was the first mold that Sarah sculpted for Briar. She also sculpted Imperador des Aquas, which was last year's 2016 Briar Fest celebration horse. So we'll take a look at how Chanel's uh, white marks are coming along. You gotta kind of rinse off those studs because they can look like white marks. So we're looking pretty darn good here. Um, it looks like maybe we got a tiny mark here on the hip still, so we'll work on that just a little bit. And again, this is just liquid dish soap and hot water. And then I know the mark was up here on the hip, so I'm going to put my finger now on this washcloth. And I have this problem of, I see the mark when I rinse the horse off and then I lose it. And I know it was up in this area, but I don't see it. So I'm just going to go very gently over this left hip area and then we'll rinse off and recheck. Oh, I see it. It's possible that one was a scratch too, but I don't think so. And I'm not scrubbing hard. I'm just barely, barely putting pressure on. If, if you 
push hard. Like I said, you'll leave shiny marks and you won't be happy. So don't do that. Um, you could probably do that on a model um, that has a, a white bare plastic. But um, yeah, in general, don't push hard or you'll leave shiny marks or otherwise damage a uh, nice paint job. See how Chanel's doing here. Wow, I think we got all those white marks. Awesome. And a lot of times, um, even after they're rinsed off, they still have some soap on them. So I always give them a couple of rinses to make sure that all that soaps off because it also can kind of leave like a, a watermark looking mark. Silver is doing here. Uh, let's see, maybe a tiny mark here on his rump and a tiny mark here on his shoulder. Let me get this water warmed up again. I'm not sure if these are going to come off. They might be a little tiny rubs or they might actually just be minor enough. But sometimes it's not worth damaging. Um, a model like if I have to scrub really hard at something sometimes I'll just leave it alone because a little I mean if you look at this it's just like a teeny teeny little pinprick white mark and a lot of times that's better than ending up with a damage finish but we'll give this guy one more and go there's the dish soap on his shoulder and on his haunch I'm just taking um I use old used toothbrushes kind of gross but um they get very clean by going into all these different uh, cleaning detergents. So be very gentle with your toothbrush too because these can leave uh, shiny marks too. And I'm going to see if I can find this silly little teeny weeny white mark. It was on the front of his shoulder here. I still see it. Sometimes when um, these marks are being stubborn like this, um, I'll run them under hot water for um, like up to 30 seconds. It seems to help detach the paint or any marks that they have. And I mean like scalding hot water, not just warm water, scalding hot water. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run them under some hot water. And this can actually um, be really hot work if you're standing here at the sink and you're running hot water over your horse. You can work up quite a sweat. Um, kind of funny. I would personally rather be washing horses all day than dishes. This is our kitchen sink, so um, this is where we wash our dishes too. And it drives my husband nuts when I have uh, horses filling the sink and lining the, uh, the drying cloth. <laughs> I don't blame him, but hey. We're working with limited space here. So, back to white spot on the shoulder. I'm just using the pad of my finger to rub this soap in. Um, sometimes you can very, very gently take your fingernail and just barely touch that spot. Um, the uh, black is a color I really hesitate to do that on because um, it does show shiny marks, or at least this matte type of black shows shiny marks very easily. So, um, be careful. I'm not seeing that white mark, but sometimes they're really persistent and they come back after the horse is dry or it's just because the soap's on them. Oh, now I see it. And then you can't really see what you're doing because the soap is covering the mark. Um, this is, again, a really teeny, tiny, infinitesimal little white mark. 
All right, so let's give them a rinse, see where we're at. just barely there so I'm gonna put a little more soap on and I'm just gonna just barely barely touch it with my nail here other than that I think I'll just leave it alone because sometimes less is more oh I think it left I think we got rid of that white mark awesome and then I think there was one on his tip here we'll do the same thing and under hot water and then I'll find the mark on the tip I'm going to just barely, barely touch it with my fingernail. Um, not only does the soap help to um, loosen any bond between marks that are on the horse like some other paints, it also creates a slippery surface, which is why the fingernail thing works. Because if you were to try just using your fingernail on a um, dry horse with no soap, you almost definitely would end up with... Uh, Anyway. Okay, so he's looking pretty good here. Uh, rinse off my rag and at the same time give him an extra rinse. And I noticed that I forgot to bring my handy dandy t shirt over here. So I'm going to leave this beautiful black beauty for you guys to gaze at for just a moment. Well, I grab my um, t-shirt. Okay, this is just a um, plain white under t-shirt. Um, I just dry it very gently. One of the problems we have is we have cats in the house and everything gets covered in hair. And if the t-shirt gets covered in hair, then the horse gets covered in hair. So uh, we're constantly washing these t-shirts. So that uh, is a great use for old t-shirts. Um, ideally they would be white, but I would imagine an old t-shirt that has been through the wash several times that it's colored would be fine too, since I don't think that it would bleed on your horse. Um, on another note, um, for you uh, customizers out there, these t-shirts are great for um, also what um, some preppers call socking a model horse, which is after you have applied, applied the primer, you basically buff it out with either a sock or um, I have used these shirts too and they work pretty well and they leave like a glass smooth finish to apply your paint to. And I'm sorry, I guess I'm getting this horse off camera because I don't want to get this um, t-shirt too wet. I don't want it to touch the bottom of the sink and get all wet and then like make my efforts at drying not worthwhile. But ooh, he's looking great. Um, Fantastic. So here we have uh, Black Beauty. He's looking just fantastic. Putting him back behind the camera. And just as I did the shoe, you know what I noticed? I noticed he has a black mark on the back of his tail. Right there. So we'll give that a quick look for a brush over so we can get that off. And this was um, kind of a never ending process with me. I'll think I'm done doing this and then I'll discover another mark like that and um, even more so when I go to take pictures we have super duper strong photo lights so um, every little flaw stands out but at that point uh, once they get into photo um, I might try very quickly to remove a mark but if uh, it's not coming off then it's just being photographed and disclosed and quite honestly it might be very easy for the buyer to remove but I don't want to get the horse all wet again because sometimes they um they get just a little bit of water in their nose and when they get a little bit of water in their nose they end up kind of dripping onto um, our background which is a poster board in our photo tent 
and then that leaves a dark spot in the photo tent and kind of kills my photo taking for the day. So I tend to not do that. Looks like it's gonna need some hot water. Hot, hot, hot. And this time we'll use a little bit of the uh, Simple Green cleaning um, detergent and a little bit of dish soap. And then I'm gonna find that white mark. And very, very gently, I'm going to scrape it with my fingernail. This one's being more stubborn than the others, but I guess um, his tail wasn't really getting as wet as the rest of him. So I might just have to address that black mark later. I'm thinking that's the best course of action, because other than that, he's just looking great. So we'll rinse him off, and we'll dry him off again. Well, for those of you that wash your models, where do you guys do it? Do you have a, um, a laundry sink? I would love to have a laundry sink, but we don't have one. So I use the kitchen sink and our bath sinks are really shallow so I can't really use them. So our kitchen sink has many, many purposes. And it's also uh, the furthest from the hot water heater. So it unfortunately takes some time to warm the water up. Not a huge amount of time though. One of these days we'll have one of those awesome on-demand water heaters. That's on my wish list. I've never owned one of those but that would be fairly sweet um if i'm not going straight to photographs on these a lot of times i'll give them a quick once over so that they're at the point where they're probably not going to leave any um water stains and by water stains i mean you can see the watermark but it'll come right off uh but i'm doing just enough on his body like the on their manes and their tails you typically don't see the wet spots when they dry so I'm not too worried about those I'm not going straight to photographs on these horses um, again and I, I tend not to do that because uh, they can drip onto the photo background and then I can't take any more pictures so here is pretty Milky Way who's um, just was a little dusty this pretty horse didn't really have any issues um, it's the first one I've seen in person. She's got really pretty uh, modeling on her face and she's got painted on shoes. And she actually was pretty much dry by the time I picked her up. These um, kind of more semi-gloss finish models, they don't hold um, water spots as much as those dark models like that matte black beauty I was just working on. So she looks good. I'm gonna give the stand a quick dry. Get Twilight Terror. Who also seems to be mostly dry by now. Um, I was pretty careful not to get uh, any water up into. You can see he's got electronics on his belly because he lights up and he makes sounds. And I guess we can test that. Let's see if he lights up and makes his sounds. Pretty cool, huh? I love this horse. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, I just missed his face. Give his face a little drying. Then Tallulah, who I don't think she really had any marks to wash off. She. Oh, but I see she has some rubs. Well, she either has rubs or white marks over by her left nostril here. Um, so she does perhaps need a little more work. Um, here's Chanel.
So now I see that this video is almost 30 minutes long and I can't imagine that anyone is actually going to watch all 30 minutes so um, we might just speed this up and you guys won't have to listen to me talk and you won't know that you're not having to listen to me talk. Uh, that Chanel cleaned up really nice too so that we have Chanel. And I think this is a great stopping point for the video. Thanks for watching.